Fans who were caught on camera chanting racist slurs in a Paris metro station. Uh, UK police are believed to be examining uh, the footage, which does show a group of men refusing to let a black man board the carriage. Uh, and you can hear a sort of chant as well in it. Uh, the club has condemned the behaviour, saying any fans involved would face a ban. We're joined now by former Chelsea player Mickey Ambrose. Good morning to Good you. Morning. Good morning. Uh, obviously, widespread condemnation, huge shock. I mean, the racist chanting and the fact it was done so brazenly in public, how did that make you feel, knowing I'm they were Chelsea fans? Very upset. I used to stand in the shed end as a 10-year-old at Chelsea back in the day in the 70s, and uh, obviously they had bad problems then both players and, and fans as well, but it, we've gone back to the dark ages. I mean, it's very upsetting. I think that um, it's basically a disgrace, and uh, if I can say these morons should be... The, the book should be thrown at them. Were you surprised to see it? it? Had you hoped things had moved on? Yeah, I mean, it's not a train station, but it's, in society we have people that carry on this way still, whether it's sexism, uh, homophobia or whatever. But uh, I was surprised that... Mm. I mean, I've travelled on the trains. Mm. Um, I was just surprised that... Uh, so-called Chelsea fans would act that way. Mm. Well, Mickey, look, looking at the game, there were four uh, black players in the Chelsea side either that came yeah. off the bench or started. Uh, how does that fit? I never quite understand that, that fans uh, have black players in their side and yet they can be chanting that sort of stuff on the way to the ground. Yeah, it's uh, a good question and uh, something we just can't get into their head because they, they're calling their name, they're, you know, they're, they're all graph and yet they come out and do things like this. So obviously, you know, were they Chelsea fans or were, were they just out for trouble? And obviously the police are, you, are looking at these pictures. You can actually quite clearly in one of the grabs from yeah. the video see who these people are. I'm sure they will be found. What should Chelsea do about that? Well, Chelsea acted swiftly with the statement. I mm. think, as I said, they should... Uh, once they've identified the culprits, we don't know whether they're season ticket members, how they got tickets, because Tout still sell tickets these days on the, on the streets. I think they should just throw the book and ban them from every match for life. And that's what they've said they're going to do, haven't they? They yeah. said such behaviour is no place in football society yeah. and the club is supporting any criminal action against mm. those involved. Is that enough, though, criminal action? Because that doesn't necessarily change hearts and minds, yeah. does it? I think we need to take away their, the right to go to a foot match. Mm. Hopefully that may do something. I mean, how can they get up this morning, speak to their kids if they've got children or family? It must be such an embarrassment and as I said it was totally shocked I was totally shocked by the way uh, the, the so-called fans acted yeah. in the name of a club a, a worldwide club's name well yeah. let's hope it's an isolated incident and not an indication of something wider you know because that's the thing isn't it? you just mm. hope these are just rotten apples in the barrel yes yeah but there seems to be rotten apples in many mm. little clubs and uh, you know it's it's highlighted with, with what they did today but it, Chelsea's brand and other clubs they do so much in the community footballers you know in clubs they're football in the community they go and talk to kids um, and then you get this because Chelsea's football foundation is fantastic around the world and I just think they just tarnished the club's name. And yeah. Yeah. Lastly, Mickey, yeah. you, you talked about going uh, to Stamford Bridge as mm. a kid. Yeah. Things have changed since then. I mean, th things were very different then, weren't they? In those yeah, days? I mean, not that we had to sit in those seats then, we had to stand, but I mean, in terms of, uh, yeah, there was racial abuse then, at Chelsea then and at other clubs, you know, and uh, but we've moved on since then and if you think of what black players have, have given to football and the fact that they have black players in the team and they're shouting that is just, well, the, it's just beggar's belief really. Mm, it does. Well, maybe there is some comfort in the fact that everyone's horrified mm. by it. That's a, that's a good sign in some ways, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming in and giving us your My thoughts pleasure. on it. Now, it's nearly 20 past six, and if you're worried about the spiralling cost of childcare, then you're certainly not alone. Absolutely. A report today has found that for many families, it simply doesn't pay to work. A new report reveals that for a child under two to go to nursery, it now costs an average of £115 a week for 25 hours. That's a rise of 5% in a single year. Once you add it all up, the annual cost comes to £6,003 a year. That's up a third in five years, and the first-time costs have broken through the £6,000 barrier. Well, we're joined now from South London by Helen Beresford from Families Charity for Children. Uh, it does seem extraordinary, doesn't it, that we've got to this situation.